Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to our latest in a series of webinars, New Me, New You, Enabling Digital Access in the Community. Apologies to those who may have struggled to get in. Uh, the registration opened bang on two o'clock, so I, I hope we've given a couple of minutes now so everyone is in, hopefully, that uh, wants to get in. And uh, please, um, apologies for that, and, and message friends or, or colleagues that had struggled to get in prior to the event starting at two o'clock. So we're delighted to have a, a panel ready for you this afternoon. Uh, my name is Mark Bezik. I am the National League for the NIMI Network for the Scottish Government, and I'm joined by my colleague Cathy Sharp from the Remote and Rural Health Education Alliance. So before we get underway, we'd really like to get engaged with our audience and find out who's here with us this afternoon and where you're from. So if you see the Q&A in your um, uh, uh, screen, um, you can put in there, you know, where you're from, what your profession is, or what kind of work you're doing. That'll be really helpful. You're all on mute through the event um, and during the production this afternoon, you can pause it if you like. And also we will collect questions at the end for you to put in the Q&A. <clears throat> we'll be recording the session as well, so you can share with colleagues who aren't able to attend today. But also in the chat, please add in other topics in the chat if you think that would be helpful or that would provoke some um, conversations. And if there are answers to questions in the chat that you feel would be you would like to contribute to, please use that as well. I'm going to just show you some accessibility options. So this the screen here is what you should see on your screen, although yours might be, be white on, on black as opposed to mine. Um, you can change the playback speed of today's event. You can also add in subtitles and captions if you require, plus also amend the speed and rate and size of those. If for some reason you do lose signal this afternoon or you lose the sound or the vision, please leave the session and come back in again. Normally this fixes the problem, or if you can move to a, a computer or a place where you have better broadband access, that would be really helpful. So we've got some um, a, a super panel lined up for you this afternoon. Um, we've got uh, Maria McIver, who's the Tech Service Manager from NHS Highland, and she's joined by our colleagues uh, who've been some amazing work in, in the Isle of Skye. Then we've got Kirsten Robertson, who's uh, from Argyle and Butte Health and Social Care Partnership. Uh, and she can be joined by uh, Debbie and Sharon from the Friends of Care Down Hall to share their, their amazing work they've been doing there to support digital access for people. Kathy will be monitoring the Q&A, so she'll be answering some of your questions. We've also got Mark Glass from the technical team on the VC team for any technical issues you might have this afternoon. Um, and then Cathy will be, will be collating questions to put to the panel later on at the end. We very much like to engage with our audience on Twitter. So uh, if you are wanted to tweet us at NHS Near Me, it's a good one that gets all of us at the team and myself uh, at Mark Bezik AHP as well. I very much to like to, to, to engage with people on, on the technical side of things. We're also using the hashtags for today's event, hashtag community hubs near me and then hashtag digitally enabled people. So basically, we're going to spend a little bit of time exploring how NHS Highland have successfully parted projects to enable digital access. We're going to spend some time with the panel that are sharing their stories today. And also, hopefully, we'll have a chance to discuss what, how we can use um, the examples that we've learned about today to apply in other areas. We realise that there's a remote rural angle to, to this uh, session this afternoon. However, the principles that we're exploring will apply anywhere where someone is disadvantaged with their ability to access digital resources. Um, I'm going to just spend a little bit of time setting the scene around, you know, why we're, why we're here today. Cathy's going to post links to these documents, the equality impact assessment, the evaluation, um, and some of the hubs in Connecting Scotland. So the equality impact assessment, so digital poverty in private space can be an issue for people. And sometimes accessing near me is difficult, but local community resources can help with that to provide private place, technology, connectivity and some support. Our equality impact assessment identified potential barriers and um, Mara is going to touch on these later on and how that shaped what they did in Highland. We'll also talk a bit about some of the hubs where a hub to home where a clinician connects from the clinic to a patient at home or a dyadic hub where the specialist is in a hub centre 
and the patient might be in a, a health suite or um, with an additional staff member perhaps alongside them to help. And the triadic hub, where you've got a clinician in a central hub, the patient in a remote hub with an additional staff member, for example, a GP, a healthcare or support worker. We did evaluate near me earlier this year and there was a broad consensus that there's been a massive digital shift in the last year and we should be focusing our work on addressing digital inequalities, whether that's literacy, confidence, financial hardship or connectivity, or how we as a workforce are looking after ourselves whilst we're entering this digital world in new ways of working. There's also Connecting Scotland, which is, is a, a um, an initiative where by the end of 2021, 50,000 digitally excluded households should be online by then. And we'll put the link in there for advice for people and organisations to, to access support to get connected. There's also R100. And again, this is another initiative where everyone can access broadband by the end of 2021. So again, there's a demand-led voucher, voucher scheme the Scottish Broadband Voucher Scheme and the link to R100 will be in the chat for you to have a look at. So again, there's some practical things that can help you along with um, getting connected and getting online. So I would very much like to introduce uh, Mary McIver now, who is the Tech Service Manager of NH Highland, and she's going to tell you about the work they've been doing uh, where she is. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mary. Thanks, Mark, and uh, thanks for uh, asking us to tell our community story and Share some of the practical steps we took to, to make it happen. Geographically, NHS Highland is the largest health board in Scotland, covering an area of 32,500 square kilometres, from Kintyre in the southwest to Kitness in the northeast. Near me, it's important to us to reduce travel for patients and clinicians, to provide alternative choice, and during the pandemic, it helped us keep services running. And it now, of course, it supports our remobilisation plans. NHS Highland was an early adopter. So you can just go back to the other slide, please. Thanks. NHS Highland was a, an early adopter of Near Me, and Claire Morrison forged a magnificent path developing the Near Me service for outpatient appointments and set up a Near Me staffed clinic rooms and multiple unstaffed rooms throughout Highland with the appropriate kit which people could use to access the new me appointments. Pre-pandemic, we had approximately 40 services regularly using new me to see patients. And then of course, COVID happened. And like everyone else, we were deluged with requests for service, increasing from 40 services using new me to over 400 and more than 3,000 staff needing access. The national team recognised the pressure local teams faced and in March 2020, the national team launched a 12 week scale up plan to organise near me services with resource injected at a national level. And this was greatly um, appreciated. In Highland, the national near me team deployed resources to work with primary care and care homes, focusing on technical setup and training for staff. At the same time, at a local level, we realised that we needed to bolster our small near me team, which consisted of two people. <laughs> And we were fortunate enough to have two colleagues reallocated from their substantive post due to COVID, and they each supported care homes and primary care in their setup. Change slide, please, Mark. We had great feedback from this extra support, for example, about technical issues, and we could fast track through to our e-health teams to support this. But one topic that emerged time and time again was the need to engage with patients and communities to make them aware of near me appointments where they were clinically appropriate. And then this, of course, was corroborated in late summer by the national team's near me engagement report and the national EQIE, which identified barriers. Next slide, please, Mark. So listening to the local feedback and reading and understanding the barriers identified in the national reports spurred us on to think about how we could reduce some of these inequalities and provide better access. So since I live in Sky and I, I decided to start here, that was the easiest place to start. I knew there was already good community engagement from the Sir Lewis Ritchie Review of Health and Care Provision in North Sky, which had a number of recommendations, including the creation of a Centre for Excellence and Digital Innovation for Sky, LaCalche and South West Ross. And I'd also seen firsthand resilience groups supporting people in the community through the pandemic, collecting prescriptions, 
organising deliveries of food, setting up of food banks. So I had to think about what to do. And first of all, I contacted the Highland Council ward manager in Sky, and he arranged a meeting with the local councillors and where we discussed near me and the idea of approaching communities and the councillors gave their full support. Well, that was a good box ticked. That meant if I had a, a difficulty with some of the arrangements that we were having, I could go back to the councillors for support. Then I contacted members of the community groups to ask if they were interested in meeting to discuss ideas. And I also talked to NHS colleagues to ask if they would come on board. And the local housing association colleagues who had experience of setting up the Highland Handy Person Care and Repair Service in Sky. We organised our first meeting together in October 2021. And based on the phone discussions I had had with everyone and what they'd identified as challenges, and also the barriers the national reports highlighted, we set some simple questions for discussion. Next slide, please, Mark. Nope. I think there's a slide missing. Anyway, there's simple questions. So the, the questions we put, we put to everyone was, how might we publicise near me in the community? Thanks support people to uh, access near me and provide uh, a safe space. These are simple questions, but I we think they can be if we all work together. Change slide, please. So this is a picture of our first near me safe space based in Botry on the Island. It's been made possible solely through our community engagement initiative, linking with the group leading on implementing the Sir Lewis Ritchie recommendations. The building is a first step in creating the vision of a Sky Lab, providing space for training, demonstration of digital technologies and research. Sky Lab was launched officially by Kate Forbes, the, the Cabinet Secretary for Finance last Friday. And it's only as a direct consequence of working with our community and making links that we now have this dedicated safe space within the building for people to access near me out with their home or a clinical setting. And we're really excited to see this vision develop through the coming months and years. Next slide, please. OK, final slide, you'll be glad to hear. All that we've accomplished so far through this community initiative has been achieved through partnership working. We are a partnership of equals with equal voices. And we believe we'll succeed with all of us working together as equal partners. The final slide, uh, that you see just now shows a couple of tiles co-produced with the community, which, which can be used in a Facebook page or as posters. This is taken from our co-produced community pack brought together and refined during the process. The pack contains patient information about Near Me, a volunteer information leaflet with details of the process, a community newsletter template which can be adapted for other areas, infection control guidance for the, 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 the age we live in, and PPE instructions. Our aim eventually is to expand this community initiative throughout Highland, and this pack hopefully will support other communities. Well, I know that's, I think that's my five minutes up mark, so I'll hand over to Mary MacDonald to tell her near me story from Staffan. Hello, I'm uh, Mary MacDonald. I live in Staffan on the Isle of Skye. And um, uh, so we're um, half an hour away from our nearest do doctor surgery and three hours away from um, our nearest main hospital. So when um, during COVID we had um, set up in Staffan a group called Staffan Helpers to, um, to look after residents in our community um, delivering groceries, meals and prescriptions and organising everything and making sure that everybody was OK. And we were approached by NHS Highland to um, see whether we were interested in running a, a pilot um, to do with a near me uh, project. And so we decided that that would be a, a great idea um, for our rural area. So what, what we did was we, we rewrote the near me leaflet, the NHS near me leaflet to make it relevant to our area and so that it was able to be understood by somebody who was 80 plus, i.e. no jargon. 
and included all the different ways which people could contact staff and helpers, including telephone numbers for volunteers in our area. And, and once we'd finished um, and decided that we had all the information that we needed on the leaflet that would include anybody um, of any age that could understand it, we delivered these leaflets to every house in our community. And in a rural area like ours, near me, is, is a really great service and I think will become really, really important. You can still see your consultant as though you were in the same room as them, but you cut out the six hour round trip for the people from staffing, especially as sometimes that appointment to the mainland hospitals is maybe only five minutes long. Staff and Community Council donated uh, money for a tablet with 4G and we bought a protective case, a roaming SIM card, uh, which connects to a variety of phone networks, choosing the strongest one like for our area. And we also have an old, somebody's old mobile phone, which we use as a first point of contact for community members. So like the for, for the what we're providing, the expense wasn't um, uh, you know, a fantastic amount of money. Um, uh, despite advances in technology, um, what's lacking in rural areas is good and reliable broadband signal. So there are some areas on the island you don't have access and some people who don't have any technological devices and are also daunted by the idea of learning. But they do have phone signal and that's where the tablet with the 4G comes in. And we choose to use the network for the best signal for our area, which we did by literally driving around every little road in our area, making sure that we did have a signal. Um, there was concern when we had some feedback, you know, when we were asking about, you know, the service that it would isolate people even more in our rural area if they were just going to be, um, you know, contacting the doctor or whatever by um, staying at home. But in actual fact, um, um, what, what we have also um, talked about doing is using it for um, for people to contact relatives that are, you know, like elderly people who live on their own, don't have, don't know how to work technology. Um, um, because in a rural area, everybody knows everybody else. You can we can take the tablet to somebody's house. And they could contact a relative and say Australia or Canada, be able to get to see them, which is something that they wouldn't have been able to do before. So what we do with the near me is our volunteers will take the tablet to somebody's house. They wear PPE, they set up the tablet so that all that person has to do is to um, chat to their consultant. And then we take the tablet back and we disconnect that call at the end of it. Um, uh, so far, the feedback has been really, really good. Lots of people are using the service and the biggest thing out of it is really the, the fact that they don't have to travel all that journey um, to Inverness or to Fort William for that short um, appointment. In the long term, um, uh, we're helping and advising other areas now in Sky uh, to set up um, the near me in their area and um, uh, in Staffen, we're getting a new health centre which should be open um, in the next few months and hopefully we'll have a base there for near me as well as the community um, base as well and we'll be looking at anything else in the way of using this technology to help the people in our rural community. So it's it's just been great to be involved in it. Thank you. Thank you, Mari, for that. That's been a, a super account of, of what you've done, and and uh, along with with the with the, the other Mari, how innovative and 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 the can-do attitude that you that you've shown in in being really person-centered and what do the community need and how do we how do we get around doing that? So that's been really inspirational. Thank you very much, um, Mari and Mari. So I'm going to hand over now to Kirsten Robertson, and she's going to um, spend some time with you describing. Um, their project around uh, Kenda. Thank you very much, Kirsten. Thanks, Mark. Hi, everyone. I am Kirsten Robertson. I'm a service planning manager and tech lead for Agaland Health and Social Care Partnership. 
I'm here today to talk about our community hub model um, in Argyllan Butte and um, in Cairndu Hall. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Debbie and Sharon, who are um, friends of Cairndu Hall, who have been absolutely instrumental in setting up this model. Um, I'm just going to start by giving a bit of an overview of Argyll and Butte in general, um, and hopefully that'll help explain why Near Me and digital inclusion is so important for us and a real priority. So Argyll and Butte is an area of nearly 7,000 kilometres squared. We have a population of over 86,000. We've got a higher proportion of older people than Scotland as a whole, and that's projected to increase over the coming years as well. 73% of our population live in remote or very remote areas as defined by the Urban Rural Classification Index. We're the third sparsest population of the 32 Scottish local authorities. 47% of our um, population live in areas in the 20% most deprived for geographic access to services. 17% of our population also live on an island and we've got 23 inhabited islands. I've included there on the right of your screen a map of Argyll and Butte and in blue you'll see the areas where we have a hospital, community-based hospital near me hub. And then in green you'll see the location of our Cairndu community-led near me hub. Just moving on to the next slide please Mark. Um, so just moving on to drive times and service profile, we've got a number of service secondary care services that we deliver in-house in Argyll and Butte and these include general surgery, general medicine, uh, pain management, as well as a range of mental health services. We've also got um, a range of community services and allied health professions. However, the majority of our services are provided by NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, and that's done in a couple of ways. Um, we have around 63,000 appointments held in Greater Glasgow and Clyde for our residents each year, and around 13,000 appointments um, provided locally as outreach by Greater Glasgow and Clyde, so them coming out to our community hospitals to deliver clinics as well. 50% of our population live over three hours drive from Glasgow hospitals, and you'll see I've included a map there on the right. Um, anything in white shows um, areas that are beyond the three hour limit, um, and then anything from the sort of orange up to the yellow is sort of over the, the, the two hour limit as well. 75% um, of our population live over an hour from Glasgow hospitals as well. There are various forms of transport that can be utilised, including bus, ferry and air. However, we've got well-known challenges around these, particularly the limited frequency that doesn't often suit around appointment times. It can also be difficult if coming from one of our remote islands like Collinsey um, to actually go to Glasgow to an attended appointment that might only last 20 minutes, that might involve a ferry journey, two ferry journeys um, as a round trip, um, public transport um, and also two overnight stays to be able to facilitate that. We've also got well documented challenges with our road network and most notably the A83 rest and be thankful landslides. Um, and this is this is very close to Cairndu, which is why it's really quite topical for them and, and, and what prompted, I suppose, some of the particular interest um, in dedicating a near me hub there. When the Rest and Be Thankful closes, it can cause a 120 mile round trip, um, an additional 120 mile round trip um, for patients that are on the wrong side of, of the Rest and Be Thankful. Um, next slide, please, Mark. So the growth of Near Me in Argyll and Butte, similarly um, to what Mary has, has spoken about in terms of the general growth across NHS Highlands, we also undertook the rapid scale up from March 2020 as a result of COVID. Um, with a huge increase in the number of professions uh, using and um, the, in general the active use increased hugely. So we went from under 50 consultations per month across seven waiting areas to over 850 per month by June last year across 103 active waiting areas. And that's been largely sustained with a little bit of variation, but we, we do tend to, to be over 700 consultations per month. But one of the key things for us um, was around the shift in the model. Um, so we've moved from that hub spoke model. So typically um, a consultation 
pre-COVID would have been um, bringing a patient into an NHS hub uh, near me room and it would have been a facilitated consultation supported by um, a healthcare support ass assistant um, or another clinician. Um, and as a result of COVID, we obviously moved from that hub spoke model to a more hub home model. And as a result of that, we recognise that there are huge issues out there around digital inequalities, particularly IT skills and literacy, access to device um, and internet and mobile connectivity. So we started to think about plans of how, we're, how we were going to address um, and, and as an opportune moment, Karen Do were quite keen to look at how they could also address in line with some capacity that had been created in their hall um, due to relocation of a nursery that used to be located within there. So we started to look at um, the expansion of the community hub model. Um, so we started to work with Care and Do around plans for there. And that's um, and I'll let Debbie and Sharon talk about that in a moment. But that's very much the direction we want to go in. We want to look at how we can engage um, with our communities to um, let them know about the, the increase in, that's happened across near me um, and very much our intention to continue to deliver services um, in that way, um, reducing distance as a barrier to access for our patients and helping them fit their appointments around, around their own lives. And that community hub model um, will be really helpful in terms of facilitating access if areas are quite remote from a hospital location that we currently have an NHS um, near me hub within. Um, and Cairn is an, a good example of that because they are over an hour away from their nearest community hospital within our Gowland Butte as well. We are going to be exploring other models such as an equipment loan library, so loaning out um, tablets um, to patients uh, to facilitate uh, either a near me appointment or in general to use tech. Um, and we had a good example of this recently where a patient was referred into a Beating the Blues online um, mental health programme, um, but didn't have the appropriate equipment at home to be able to um, undertake that appointment, that, that uh, programme. So we were able to loan um, a tablet that we had in stock in, in tech and facilitate that through our integrated equipment um, hub that delivers general hospital equipment out there. So we're looking at expanding that model where we'll have a small level of stock that could perhaps support people to undertake um, either appointments or a regular program of work in terms of the mental health tech programmes or perhaps a physio rehabilitation programme that they might need regular near me appointments for. And importantly within that, um, we, we know that we need to evaluate the success of these different types of um, models. Um, it's really important that we take into consideration what's working well um, for patients and how they want to see our services delivered. The Care and Do model is very new, um, but it's absolutely a priority of ours that as and when we get um, patients starting to come through um, the hub there, that we're evaluating that patient experience and, and how they found um, attending an appointment in that way. So I'm now going to hand over um, to Debbie and Sharon in Cairn Do to talk us through um, their vision for Cairn Do and how they got that up and running and how it links into the wider health and wellbeing ambitions that they've got for the service because they've got a really fantastic service there. Thank you. Um, I think there's First thing I'd like to say is there's a real consistency in, the, in what's been presented so far in the um, rationale behind the methodology of developing services like this. Um, it's about equal access, it's about accessibility, um, and it's about equality, fundamentally about equality. Um, just to pick up on what Kirsten said, one of the things that we found when we set this up was it's not just about the provision of the equipment. Um, it's about people being able to afford a monthly broadband payment as well. And so within the hall, we um, upgraded it to a fibre connection so that we made sure that we could have something that was completely reliable and fast for not just for healthcare, but if people wanted to access it for any other reason. Um, our room, or the room we're in now, and the picture that of Sharon using the um, doing the test there, um, was funded by the National Lottery. The equipment was funded by the Health and Social Care Partnership. Um, so we were completely dependent on other people providing us with some money to enable us to do this. Um, the vision within Care and Do really is about um, linking with a broader vision around health and wellbeing. Um, you've got the next slide. Um, what, what we 
sorry, let me just not end there. Yeah. Um, what, what we aimed to do around that was that we, when we were looking at the provision around the near me, it was part of a whole package of healthcare. Um, we already had a community gym. We had um, pre-COVID a number of um, classes and fitness things on in the evening. And we wanted to expand that so that it was it what the offering to get people in wasn't just about accessing health services, it was about that overarching well-being model where people would come in to use the facility. And so this became less strange about coming into this hub room which we've got. In addition to the near me, we're also negotiating about having people like a podiatrist in. Um, we've had a hairdresser visit the hall and um, so people didn't have to travel. We've got other um, therapists, particularly physio, were interested in having come in use of the room because we can do that in partnership with the gym, for example, around cardiac rehab or any other um, issues around mobility. Because we've got professional equipment, it can be tied into the whole model around looking at, at well-being. Bit anything to add to? We've got the um, we've got a book exchange as well. We've partnered with. Um, some local publishers because, again, it provides a reason for people to access, to come in, to look at, um, to get books, so they've got something to read. But it's also about that model of companionship as well. So if I could reinforce anything around all of this, could you as, could get the next slide, Mark? Um, is that the model that we've got here it's about looking at the building, about the community garden. We've got a book exchange. Uh, we've had a number of volunteers. There's a massive human factor in this about how volunteers have helped to make all of this happen. We couldn't have done it without people within the community. We couldn't have done it without um, the, support, the financial support. And we certainly couldn't have done it without the Health and Social Care Partnership. So I think if a strong message comes around this, it's about that you can't do it alone. It is most definitely a partnership model with your community and your community members, your volunteers, and all the people that will help you make it happen. Um, we have, you'll have seen that picture at the bottom there, the greenhouse was uh, being built when that picture was taken. So it is now complete. And actually tonight, we're gonna to go and put some of the, the things in it so it can actually be used. Um, and people that we capture for using all of these um, facilities, familiarise them with the hall, familiarise them with the near me room so that it be, so that any barriers around use help to be broken down by accessing other facilities within the hall. Anything else? Um, no, the, in respect to the room for the library, there will also be a kind of open session where there will be someone present, either myself or Debbie, um, which will allow the elderly population to come in. Quite a few of them have approached us with internet issues like they're not sure when they're getting scam emails coming in if they should answer they need to renew their driving licenses and they've got no experience of using tablets or anything so there will be sessions available drop-in sessions where they can come in with a trusted person that they're not giving personal details out to the world and they know that whoever's taking the details and allow them to do any digital stuff work that they want to do as you said earlier not all of them are happy to do it even if they had the facilities um, it is an older community, as a lot of the communities. Some of them, the reason behind the library space again was some of the females, their partners have died and they've been widowed. Now we do have a pub. They're not going to go into a pub in the middle of the afternoon or early evening to see if anyone's in there, to see if there's anybody to talk to. So the aim of that was a space that they could have that was warm um, and they can make coffee and they can have a chat with another person. Again, that was highlighted with COVID because they weren't allowed in and out of each other's houses and they feel that this is a more safer environment. It's being cleaned, it's a bigger space and they are not having different people coming in and out their, their home address. So it was giving them a wee bit more security. Um, again, the greenhouse, it's an older population. A lot of them have had to give up their veg plots because they're just not physically capable. So therefore the raised beds and the greenhouse is allowing them to continue with activities that they enjoyed previously, something that they enjoy doing, but they're just not physically fit to do it in, in their own gardens that they have. It's not because they don't have the land. 
they don't have the, the facilities on that land now or don't feel capable of maintaining vegetable plots. Um, and obviously anything that's left will go back into a community kitchen. Again, it's a hub for just for company, for social events. And um, so that is the main idea behind the library room as well as the book exchange, but it's really a facility to incorporate a number of things um, more for the isolation. Uh, for okay. when I say an older generation, they're still perfectly they're a fit generation and they're still perfectly able to do things and enjoy company of others, um, but they had no no central setting to go to that would facilitate that. Um, I think that's it. That's it. That's um, super. Thank you so much, uh, Debbie and Sharon, for sharing. Again, really inspirational uh, accounts of, of a community coming together. And, and, I, and, and I don't think we can underestimate the impact that, that one road closes has on, on Care and Do as a community. Uh, that's, I've never fully appreciated that. That is quite astounding. Um, but again, looking at how you've, you've, you've focused on equality and, and the, the wider community well-being, not just digital access, but but everything there, but but near me for me, an important part of that. So that's been a really excellent example of, of a community pulling together with support from from local services as well to make that happen. So um, and again, so what, what we've come to now is I'm going to just uh, move that along there. Um, so what we'd like to do now is I'm going to um, basically hand things over to, to Cathy and to see you know, what kind of questions and discussions have been going on in the q and I'm going to have a look at the Q&A in a minute myself, um, but um, I'm going to just uh, pull up Cathy on the screen um, and hopefully she can uh, let us know what's been happening chat-wise. Okay, Cathy, what do we got? Oh, we think you're on mute still. Sorry, it's so easy to do that. Um, yes, we've had a, uh, a few questions coming in now. Um, I've got a one here about the Skylab. Um, the person hasn't put their name who's asked it. It asked if the Skylab and the Near Me volunteers, well, it, it says the Skylab and Near Me volunteers are two great resources and ask, are these resources other areas of Scotland may see in the future? Uh, I don't know who would like to answer that one. I suppose I, I could pick that up think, in terms of a, a national sorry. perspective uh, around, you know, these are examples from, from Highland and, and, and Argyll and Butte, and I suppose one of the reasons behind the webinar today was to, was to pick people's interest and, and look at what can you do in your area and, and how could us as a, as a network uh, and, and the Scottish Government around the, the connectivity support or replicate what you've done um, there in, in, in Highland. Is there anything you want to add on that Kirsten or I appreciate someone wanted to chip in there so sorry for that. I was just going to I was just going to say that anything anything that um, is done in any of these areas that we're talking about, any areas of the Highland or rural areas, I think can be ruled out in in lots of places and working with the communities and um, with NHS and um, any of these other um, uh, third sector, anything that we can do for anybody, I think going into the future is is um, uh, is what we're looking at. We're, we're certainly keen in Argyll and Butte to look at rolling out what we've done in Care and Do, and it might not be an exact um, replica of that model, uh, but one of the areas we're looking at, um, just in terms of that asset based approach, what's out there in the community already that we can use as a multi purpose room. Um, so, one of the areas that we're looking at is uh, working with the organisation that runs um, libraries and leisure services in Argyll and Butte to see if we could tap into the resources that they've got out there in the communities as well. Um, so, potentially using a, a quiet room in a library 
as a near me room as well and, and training up um, people who work in, in the library as, as, uh, as being able to uh, help facilitate a near me appointment as well. Um, so that's just one of the areas that we are looking to ex expand on. Um, but I think it's really important that health boards and health and social care partnerships are working with the communities to develop this because I think it's about what the community needs um, and it will be different based on geography um, or, or the circumstances around digital inequalities in, in across the areas. OK, thank you for that. Um, now, uh, sort of carrying on from um, looking at appointments for um, and delivering appointments to individuals, um, an anonymous uh, uh, question has come through for any updates on developing a platform for delivering groups such as group therapy and mental health? I, I could probably pick up on that one. Um, I was just replying to that one in the, in the chat, but I'll, I'll do it live now. So. We're currently working with both Attend Anywhere, who power near me, and Microsoft to look at uh, safe, patient friendly, and um, clinician usable uh, solutions. So, in July, we are anticipating having a test platform for uh, near me groups. So, we'll be testing that in July, feeding back to Attend Anywhere, and they, they are intending to release that for clinician use sometime in September. Meanwhile, um, we are working with Microsoft looking at what, what they can do within the Teams environment that would meet the information governance and security requirements so that the, the clinicians could run, again, safe sessions for patients alongside um, a platform that's, that's easy to use. So it's work in progress, but, but yeah, bear with us, we're, we're working on it. Thank you, Mark. Um, now, a slightly different question from Fraser. Um, who writes, uh, part of our pain service in Glasgow has a national service in which patients from all over Scotland attend. At the moment, those that do not have internet uh, computers are disadvantaged. Um, is there a way to check out where the nearest near me hub in the community might be for each individual? Who would like to take that question? So that, that might again might be a, a national question. That's a good question, actually. How how do folk identify where your local resources are? And, and you know, Kirsten and Mari have got have got access to maps. Um, and I suppose that might be a question for us as a network to take back to our near me leads to say how do you um, publicise where resources are. So I'll, I'll make a note of that. Thank you. Great stuff. Thank you, Mark. OK, I've got uh, uh, another question um, from one somebody who's attending. What process do you go through to verify volunteer status and then manage this group with COVID-19? Mario, Kristen? Um, well, we we worked um, as as uh, when we got our, our volunteers, we worked with um, NHS Highland on um, what the regulations were for PPE and um, we used what we had in our community. We provided our volunteers with the information on what what these regulations were, uh, what PPE, PPE had to be worn. So everybody had training, um, uh, not only from like somebody locally, but also from the near me um, group. They did. They all did um, uh, like a session online um, uh, with um, uh, you know how to how to attend people's houses and you know how to um, uh, how to use the PPE while they were there. So you know it was it was really really good that there there was um, information and um, uh, and help available for our volunteers. That's great. Thank you. OK, um, a few questions still here. To Can I just pick up on something from the previous question um, about there are codependencies in this, and it was the question from the pain clinic about the map. I think um, that raising awareness nationally would be really helpful because if we are to have people who access clinics remotely, be it 
with, with us for, within NHS Highland or whether it is within NHS GDC, then the clinicians themselves have to be aware of what facilities are available so that they can make the offer that you could have your appointment digitally rather than attending in person. And so in order to ensure that that, is, that option is made available to people, perhaps having that national map would be incredibly helpful to spread out across NHS Scotland so that those options by clinicians or, um, or practitioners would be available to everybody. Yes, that sounds good. Well, OK, I've got somebody here asking, do the hospital booking staff arrange on behalf of the patient or does the patient book with the local health volunteer service directly? Sorry, I can answer that for our Gail and Butte. Um, so um, we basically the answer is that the patient would book directly. Um, the volunteers of the hall there have got a mobile number um, that they that somebody will have 24/7, and we created we worked with them to create a poster that went out with that information on about where the new me hub was located and how to get in contact with a volunteer um, who could help facilitate that appointment. Um, so that's the approach that we've taken uh, taken there because obviously. As a, as a health service, we can't really control how that hall would be accessible to people. So we need it to be community owned and led in terms of that accessibility, who's a key holder and who's available to help support that appointment if it's within a community hub. But we've Lovely. definitely worked in partnership around how we promote that. We also wrote to all of our GPs surrounding GP surgeries and um, with that information and asked for that to be displayed as well as our sort of common um, referrers or, or providers um, within our um, hospital sites as well. Lovely, thank you Kirsten. Um, now I've got here from uh, somebody, we'd like to do a loan library but how do we ensure the return of the tech that we lend out? I can also <laughs> come in on that one. So we've okay. um, not started up that that service yet. It was a what the example I gave was a one off, and we obviously had the details of, of of that patient and where the equipment had been loaned for and what period of time. So we facilitated the the drop off and the pick up of that equipment. That's very much what we were, were planning to do on this with the small number of kit that we're looking to purchase. We've got an asset manager in our Gailand Butte that also uh, asset manages our telecare equipment that goes out. Um, so we would asset manage the equipment in exactly the same way we would if, uh, if a patient was getting loaned a hospital bed or a Zimmer frame or any other type of equipment. We would asset manage um, the, the iPad or tablet that was getting loaned out so that we can keep track on where that is and, and when it's due to be picked up again. Thank you, Kirsten. Kirsten. In respect of that, I presume that any equipment that would go out on loan um, would be kind of safeguarded and would have firewalls within them. Obviously, if this equipment's going out to households, you've got no control over what that internet's been used for. So would that have the NHS firewall contained on that? There's those devices. That's one of the things we're working out with our IT department um, on or around whether how we can control that so that it's used for the appropriate things. But I think um, within Highland and our near me rooms, particularly the some of the rooms that Mary mentioned about the unstaffed rooms that are available for booking in North Highland, there are restrictions so that a patient, if they're going in there to an unstaffed room, can't you know go on Google um, or you know they can only use it for the purpose that it's intended to. So we were working with our IT department to make sure that that's secure. Okay. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, got a question here from Rachel Daniels, lead podiatrist at NHS Five. Um, she says one of the issues they're having in their areas, it's not such a rural area, so travelling to health centres is not a concern from most patients. Uh, they feel that they're hands-on service and they're not keen for the potential benefit of near me over their perceived concerns. Any advice on sort of um, getting them to be more uh, in, into using near me or that kind of telehealth avenue. I think it's, uh, Kathy, it's definitely um, showing by good example if there is someone in podiatry using it in another area, if you can make them, um, I'm sure someone somewhere, I'm not sure um, I think they're using it for some clinics in particular, just starting off. 
But I think it's it's nearly a, a near me champion that you're looking for with and, and publishing these stories locally to say, oh, look what we can do. And, and it's actually, as you know, it's whether it's clinically appropriate to use it and whether you would want to use it pre-appointment for triage um, and, and actually get your waiting times down that way. You can look at people to and prioritise them that way. Um, there, there's different ways of using near me. It, it's whether it's clinically appropriate for the, the person. Okay, thank you, Mary. Um, a quick and hopefully simple one. Is an I, apple, sorry. No, no, I, I was just going to say that as well as the, the map of where near me is, I think the feedback from eat from different areas it, and from different clinicians is really good as well. Maybe having a page that has that because it's that's how you're going to. It's certainly working here. You know, people are telling other folk, oh, we don't have to go to Inverness now. We don't have to go to Broadford. We don't have to go to Portree because we don't, you know, we can contact the doctor and they're going to phone you back and you can actually see them without making that um, journey. And so I think the, it's the feedback as well that's that's really important for, you know, something that's really new like this is to get get that out there as well from um, from the different clinicians, um, uh, you know, just putting out how, how people feel after their appointment. I think what you need to take into account as well is with COVID, um, particularly in residential areas that don't have the distances applied to get to doctors or hospitals, a lot of the population, especially the elderly, are not wanting to go to these appointments because they're based within hospitals that have maybe been in a high risk area. Um, I know they've certainly still got residents that are having to go to Inverclyde because um, they've not used the near me yet. Um, and the thought of going into Inverclyde Hospital when that's been a hot spot previously. So there's really a reluctance then to go to the doctor or to go to the hospital because they don't want to physically go to the hospitals. Now that would be the same whether you're in a remote area or whether you're in a city centre. They still, you know, there'll still be an element of patients that don't want to go to a hospital. Um, so I think it, certain areas of it is not just for remote areas. Um, I think you'll find there will be a use um, even in other developed areas where access isn't the main priority. Lovely, thank you. That sounds uh, good advice. Um, I've got somebody asking about the Skylab. Um, they want to know what the uptake is like for the use of Skylab and do many, do many people access the venue for digital consultations? It was launched last Friday. So Kate Forbes has been our first appointment uh, and we've, we've officially to get it up and running. So uh, we can't give you any further information about that. But it was just officially launched last Friday with Kate Forbes as our first patient. Thank you, Mary. It's obviously early days yet, but uh, watch this space. OK, okay I, um, I, I think we're kind of um, reaching the point where we need to, we're running out of, well, we're reaching the end. I think I just wanted to, to just acknowledge that, that there's been some fantastic questions and discussion. Um, I'm conscious that we may not have answered everyone's questions. And um, what we've done in other webinars is we've gathered the Q&As up um, and, and gone round the panel and, and the uh, near me team. So questions that haven't been answered live today, we will we will put in a pack afterwards um, as, as a Q&A for you to look at, along with the recording from today's session and the links to the various documents and resources we found and, and, and the slides too. So you have a, everyone who's registered, whether you're here just now or not, will um, will get a pack afterwards that you can you can look at yourselves and um, also share with colleagues if needed. Um, so what I would very much like to do is is just ask people. We'd very much like to um, find out what your current use of NUMI is um, and, and what your thoughts on today's session have been. So I'm going to just put in the chat um, a we a survey about today's webinar. Hang on, sorry, I'll slow down. Um, and if you we were really, really appreciative of, of feedback and thoughts on today's session and, and your and your current near me use and, and future use. Um, I'm going to just flick that around. So again, in summary, uh, I mean, we've heard from some fantastic examples that have been really community led, very person centred. 
very committed, mo motivated, innovative people driving this forward um, and, and the support from, from local statutory services. So again, some really exam good examples that I feel, and I'm sure you, you know, you'll agree that, that they'll be replicable in all sorts of different places. And, and maybe we need to do some work nationally around, you know, how do we publicize this kind of thing? And today's session is probably the beginning of that, um, just to make sure that other people know about the kinds of work that are going on. So um, I'm aware of time. Thank you so much for, for the, 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 the great number of people that have joined us this afternoon. Uh, it's been a really thrilling turnout and um, very much thank everybody that has made the time to, to gather their stories and share with them today. And, and I have to say a personal uh, a, a debt of gratitude to the, the speakers that have persevered with trying to get into Microsoft Teams to present today. Um, so we're very, very grateful that, that we were able to get them in eventually. So, um, and again, thank you to, to Kathy for, for, for hosting the, the Q&A and looking after that side of things. And also for Mark keeping us right on the old technical side of things in the background. So again, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, that's it for today and hopefully we'll see you again at another one of our webinars. Um, goodbye.